Before we get into today's video, I have to thank Caraway for sending me this non-toxic ceramic cookware set. First of all, this color, can we talk about it? Second of all, the organizer, can we talk about it? I feel like a whole chef. I put mine on display personally, but you know, you could put these under a cabinet if it felt right for you. They have a ton of colors to choose from, by the way. But I just want to emphasize how beautiful it is to be able to prepare your food at home. And we're gonna get into this more in this video, but we don't even know the energy of the cooks that prepare the food when we eat out. And having this cookware set has really inspired me. You guys know I do eat mainly raw, but when I do eat cooked food, it is really, really medicinal to create an environment of love and feel good and good music on, as you can see. <laughs> and really, really enjoy my process of creation. About to put this in my body, so obviously I should put some love in it, right? And another big plus of Caraway cookware is that they are completely nonstick, so I don't have to use as much oil, which makes my meals a lot more healthy. And also, their cookware is completely free of PTFE, heavy metals, PFOAs, PFAs, you guys can look into these more, but no KDM or toxic metals, and they're so easy to clean. That's a big plus, y'all. Just need a soft sponge, a little bit of soap, you're good to go. If you guys are interested in investing into your kitchen or into your health, I've added a 10% site-wide discounted link in the description. Now, let's get into the video. I used to binge eat. I used to emotionally eat. I used to habitually eat. I used to eat to that place where you just get the itis and pass out. For those who don't know what the itis is, Urban Dictionary. Hey guys, my name is Casey Michelle. I'm a breathwork facilitator slash content creator. And I help people go from anxiety to acceptance just by paying attention to their breath, by bringing in breath awareness. And today's video is a really, really big topic for me uh, because it was probably the most significant, well, it's hard to say, one of the most significant things that changed when I started doing breathwork directly impacted the way that I consume in more ways than one but when speaking about food specifically most of you who have been around here for a while know that I went on 65 plus day fasts 30 day fasts water fasts, coconut fasts juice fasts you name it I've got really into that just by getting into breathwork now that's not to say I don't do that anymore and I know this is a very popular question for a lot of people who have been following me for a while as far as like the liquidarian, breatharian, fasting, vegan, raw, what do you eat? I wanna talk about it all today in today's video. We're gonna talk about my four main tips for you to bring into your eating life and how eating and breathing are so side by side. The way you breathe and the way you eat directly affect each other. And I really wanna break that down today and really provide you with some insight on how maybe you can move forward in more sustainable ways in both departments. I'm not here to tell you to go breatharian. I'm not here to say go fast. I'm simply here to bring some mindfulness to the way that you eat and the way that you breathe in today's video. But before we do any of that, you gotta give this video a thumbs up, gotta be subscribed and at least turn the notifications on. And if you're really feeling extra loving, extra compassionate today, <laughs> tell me what you ate for breakfast today, which you broke fast with. Break fast, breakfast. What was the first thing you ate today? No wrong answer, I'm not judging. This is a judgment-free space as we know. Let me know in the comments what the first thing was that you ate today. I honestly feel like there's gonna be a part two to this video because it's such a big topic for me. I think to put this into perspective a little bit so you can really get it because I think we like, we need food, we need water, we need oxygen. You can go weeks, weeks without food, without even water, without sleep, but you can probably only go a couple minutes without taking a breath. So I hope that puts it into perspective how valuable oxygen and carbon dioxide is for us to keep going for our vitality. That being said, how often <laughs> are you at lunch? Are you out with your friends? And that food is bussing. It's so good. And you're just spooning it. You're just going and scarfing it down. It's so good. You can't help it. A lot of us turn to convenience instead of mindfulness when eating, but eating in itself can be and is really a spiritual practice if you allow it to be. Um, I think the same way that we bring mindfulness and awareness into breath work or meditation or yoga or any of those facets, start to bring them into your eating. And I'm saying this to say, once you start to do breath work and you have that awareness of your breath and how it feels in the body to be fully present, kind of naturally starts to ripple into every area of your life, but definitely in the place where you consume. I hope that this isn't necessarily a trigger for anyone because I'm trying to be as mindful as I can with this video because I 
did suffer with binge eating. I don't even like to label it as anything, but I did. I went through that. Really easy way to start to introduce this to you, and I'm like really trying to choose my words here carefully, but your stomach is the size of your fist. So look at your fist right now. Your stomach. Yep, it's on the left side of your body. Size of your fist. Think about the portions of the food that you eat, or maybe the density of the food that you eat. Through breath work, I have really realized and Literally everybody I've worked with, all my one-on-one -on -one clients are like, the way I'm eating is changing. My relationship with food is not what it was before we started. And that is because, a million reasons, but <laughs> the denser the food, the more shallow the breath. You consume a little lighter, a little less dense, a lot less big portion sizes. You can still get those full belly breaths throughout your day. As you guys know, or maybe don't know, but the breath work I teach is really more of a sustainable kind of breath work and bringing awareness to your breath always, not just in the breath work practice. Tonight, when you go to eat your dinner, eat whatever you're already gonna eat and try to take some belly breaths afterward. Honestly, this is a good way to help digestion and aid in it because you're massaging the digestive tract as you inhale and diaphragmatically breathe, not just from the chest. But if you're diaphragmatically breathing, really helps the digestion. But think about if you ate like, if you had like a smoothie or you had some fruit, and how that breath would feel versus a big, huge pizza. <laughs> Those types of breaths are gonna feel really, really different. So this isn't to say starve yourself. This is just to say, be mindful of maybe one, your portion size, and maybe your quantity or your overall need. Breath work decreases your needs. There's no better feeling than not needing. And I think we've been really conditioned to think we need three meals a day for 365 days, and that is so, much food and not enough elimination. I have a lot of videos about fasting and elimination and all that kind of stuff over on my Patreon and on here too. Like we need to be eliminating as much as we are consuming. And most of us, literally more than you think, are not eliminating as much as we consume. Notice your breath first thing in the morning. When you're on that fasted state, there's nothing in your belly, you're able to really expand. Notice your breath at the end of the day. You maybe had a few meals, some snacks, maybe even ate late. It's not as expanded. It's not as much breath, not as much oxygen, not as much nourishment to the cells to break down that food. So like anything else you do with your body, your body uses oxygen. Everything that you do with your body, your body uses oxygen, everything. So chewing and eating, biggest tip I will say, and some of y'all already know what I'm about to say, but slow it down, slow it down. Seriously, by not chewing and breaking up that food, you're making your body work 10 times as hard to break it down and it's restricting your breath. But if we don't chew our food down enough, then whatever we don't chew up here, our body's gotta chew down here. You have a lot more food in your stomach which crowds the diaphragm and the lungs allowing just a more shallow breath is what I'm saying. Chew your food, slow it down, that is the biggest thing I want you to take away from this video, it has really, really changed a lot for me just noticing that. And I mean, chew it, y'all. But I'm at a place now, and I still have my moments, I'm not perfect, but it's still way slower than it's ever been. I used to really be a fast eater. Literally breaking down kale until, you, until it's like liquid, until you cannot chew anymore. Like I will really chew it down. Take belly breaths as you're eating, or maybe even before you're eating. Really that's, even more valuable, but really allowing your body to process like, are we full? Are we good? Do I need any more? Really bringing in that mindful activity during this mindful activity, you're literally bringing something into your vessel, into your sacred space. It's just eat, mindfully present, just like you would breath work, meditation, prayer, no TV, no phone, just eating no distraction. It is like a known study, maybe we haven't heard this by now, but like eating and watching TV causes you to overeat immediately. You just literally, your mind is distracted and it's not paying attention to your second mind and your gut and in your stomach. That's like, yo, we're full, we're good, we don't need anymore. You just keep going because the salt tastes so good on that potato chip. So really, removing distractions will save your life as far as overeating and overconsuming. This next one is huge too. They're all huge for me. I'm really passionate about this topic, if you can't tell. The sun even came out for me. But question your hunger. That's not to say to restrict your hunger, just to add some mindfulness to it and question it. Are you just thirsty? Are you just dehydrated? Which 99% of the time is the case. Drink some water first. See if that doesn't 
satisfy you. But I think a lot of times, more often than not, we are habitually eating and emotionally eating. Breakfast for me was never something that I actually felt hungry for. As a child, as an adult, never actually wanted to wake up and immediately put pancakes in my body. That just, you know, and I'm not judging you if you do, but that just personally for me never felt like something I wanted to do. And with breath work, starting my day, anchoring my day with breath work, first thing in the morning, resetting my nervous system, allowed me to have a better discernment of like, oh, I'm not even really, I was just gonna go eat because that's what I think I'm supposed to do, but I'm not actually hungry at all. I don't need anything in this moment. Goes back to that saying that I'm always talking about is like the want to want is so real. We're just like, but I wanna make the avocado toast and the acai bowl, I just want to do it. But it was a big thing that I you know, realized and took away, like breakfast doesn't happen, breaking fast doesn't happen for me, typically until about noon every day, sometimes two, Sometimes four o'clock. I mean, the typical story of the girl being heartbroken and eating ice cream, you know, like that's exhibit A. And so often that is the case. We're sad, so comfort food makes us feel better, but then it actually ends up making you feel worse and you're like in this really crazy cycle, right? I've been there, that's why I know. <laughs> and I'm here to say that breath work really, 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 really does change the way that you eat and consume. And it's one of the most like untalked about things, I think. Like I said, every client I've worked with literally every one of them is like, my body's just wanting to be hydrated now. It just wants fruits and vegetables, or it's not wanting as much of, you know, big of a portion size that I'm used to me wanting. Because your body is stable. Your nervous system is finally like, oh, it's safe in my body. I don't really need anything right now. Desire and peace can't coexist. I'm good. I have peace right now. Like I said, taking belly breaths during or before or after you consume food, you will realize that you don't want as much as you think you want. It's all in here but it's not really in here. So I hope this video helped you on your journey of eating and breathing. And if you want to learn more or you're interested in maybe working with me, feel free to check out my website down below. I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with people. I have breathwork courses. All the goodies are down there. I definitely, these days for those curious, uh, try to keep it on the lighter side and really am aware of the portions that I'm eating. <laughs> this is like a whole other topic, but you can eat like 10 mangoes and be miserable, you know? So having more awareness of how I'm actually feeling, despite if I'm raw vegan, if I'm vegan, if I'm fasting, if whatever, like just being more in the breath than the consumption is kind of the point for me. So ramble over finally. If you wanna see part two of this video or want me to dive a little deeper, because I totally could, this is like one of my favorite topics to talk about <laughs> because it's like, I'm a real life walking example of that change. I would love, I would love to unpack that. So let me know. And uh, that's it. That's all. Happy Monday. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.